This video is on scapula, the viva voci questions and answers that are asked during practical examination. So, in this video, we will consider the parts and general features of scapula, its side determination, the attachments on scapula, and its ossification. During viva voce examination, when you pick up the scapula, the first question often asked is which type of bone is scapula and where exactly it is located. So scapula is a flat and irregular bone and it is located on the posterior lateral surface of the chest wall and its extent is from the second rib to the seventh rib. Next is you will be asked to describe the parts of the scapula. So scapula has a body and three processes. First of all, we should uh, know that this is the ventral surface here and this is the dorsal surface of the scapula and the body is a flat triangular structure. So here you can see the flat triangular part of the scapula. This is known as body of the scapula. It has got three processes. So the three processes are the first process is the spinous process or the spine of the scapula. Now this spine of the scapula has got this posterior border, broad border which you can see here. This is known as crest of the spine. And actually the anterior border which you can see here is a faint line. Uh, via this the spine is attached to the body of the scapula. So this part, the posterior border is also known as crest of the spine of scapula. And this itself has got two borders. The first is the upper border of crest of spine which you can see here with the black line. And then we have the lower border of the crest of the spine which is in blue color. So first process is the spinous process or the spine. Next process of the scapula is the coracoid process. We can see here this is the coracoid process which is directed forwards. And the third process is the acromion process. So you can see in the ventral aspect as well as on the dorsal aspect. So acromion means summit. This is going to form the summit of the shoulder. So that's why it is acromion process. So the three processes are spine, coracoid process and acromion process. Now let us look at the uh, body of the scapula. You will be asked the surfaces, the borders, the angles, the foci of the scapula. So how many surfaces are there? There are two surfaces and these two surfaces are this is the costal or the ventral surface which will come which will be uh, coming in contact with the ribs. Right, So that's why the costal surface and it is directed anteriorly. That's why the ventral surface. This is slightly concave in uh, nature you can see here and the second is the dorsal surface which you can see here this is the dorsal surface and this surface is divided into two parts by the presence of the spine of the scapula now let us look at the borders of the scapula so there are how many borders three borders are present and these are the superior border so this is the superior border which we can see here and here actually you can see on the lateral aspect of the superior border there is a notch a depression is here this is known as suprascapular notch so this uh, is uh, present above the scap in the upper part of the scapula that's why the name is suprascapular notch next border is the medial border the medial border is a sharp border as compared to lateral border so here we can see this is the medial border and then we have the lateral border this is much more rounded as compared to the medial border so the three borders are superior medial and lateral now let us look at the angles how many angles are present three angles so here we have the superior angle this is the superior angle we can see here and then we have the inferior angle this is the inferior angle and we also have the lateral angle at the lateral angle what do we have we have here a pear shaped shallow cavity which is known as glenoid cavity and this is going to articulate with the head of the humerus to form the shoulder joint or glenohumeral joint which is a ball and socket joint now there are three foci also so let us look at the three foci 
one will be present on the ventral aspect so you can see this concavity or the depression present on the ventral surface this is known as subscapular fossa there are two fossae on the dorsal aspect because of the presence of the spine and these are the one above the spine is obviously that is known as supraspinous fossa and the one below the spine that is known as infraspinous fossa now with this knowledge you can determine the side of the scapula so you will be asked to determine the side of the scapula actually you will be asked this before you describe other things but uh, for uh, in order to uh, determine the side that knowledge is essential so here let us see how will you determine the side of the scapula now here if you can see this is the dorsal aspect of the scapula so the spine of the scapula is present on the dorsal aspect so that you are going to keep dorsally and remember you have to hold the scapula in your body as if it is in your body right so the spine of the scapula that should be placed posteriorly first thing is that second is the glenoid cavity should be directed laterally so now you know what has to be kept laterally and what has to be kept posteriorly the only thing now you know is which is the upper part or the superior part of the bone and the inferior part of the bone so for that the two processes of the uh, scapula that is acromion process and the coracoid process which can only partially seen here they are directed forward from the upper part of the bone so you cannot keep them down so now when you know these things dors posteriorly what will be there spine so anterior that is concave surface that should be directed anteriorly glenoid cavity should be facing laterally acromion and coracoid process they should be projecting anteriorly from upper part of the bone so this has to be kept superiorly so now you know that this bone belongs to right side coming to muscle attachments most frequently you are asked to show the muscles attached to the medial border of the scapula right so here you should show the muscles attached both on the costal surface of medial border as well as on the dorsal surface of the medial border so here we can see this is the costal surface and this is the dorsal surface so the first muscle and a very very important muscle that is attached on the costal surface of medial border is the serratus anterior then on the dorsal surface we have three muscles attached first is levator scapulae you can remember it this way also that levator means to elevate so this will be the first topmost muscle there on the medial border second muscle is rhomboides minor which is actually attached here on the dorsal surface of the medial border just opposite to the uh, root of the spine of the scapula then we have a rhomboides minor so just remember the minor is smaller muscle so it has to be kept uh, above the major muscle right so that rule you should follow so the three muscles attached on the dorsal surface of medial border are levator scapulae rhomboides minor and rhomboides major now next let us see the muscles that are attached to the lateral border of the scapula so this is the lateral border of the scapula so here we will have two muscles and these are the first one is the teres minor so uh, teres minor it will be taking origin from two slips you can see here and actually its origin is interrupted here by the presence of an artery and that artery is the circumflex scapular artery this will participate in the anastomosis around the scapula so first muscle is teres minor on the lateral border and this is on the dorsal surface right there is no muscle attached on the ventral surface of lateral border of scapula so next is teres major so same rule follows minor has to be above <coughs> sorry and the major has to be below so teres minor and teres major muscle so how will you remember this the rhomboides uh, muscles they are not attached to humerus they are in fact attached to the uh, spines of the thoracic vertebra so they that has to be kept on the medial border whereas teres minor and teres major they are inserted where on the humerus so humerus is present laterally so teres minor and teres major muscles will be taking origin from the dorsal surface of lateral border of the scapula let us here also consider the muscle attached to the inferior angle and that muscle is latissimus dorsi this is a huge muscle this will be taking origin from many other places also but this is latissimus 
dorsi so all those muscles which will be inserted on humerus they have to be present along the lateral border here and also on the inferior angle third question that can be asked here is about the muscles attached to supraglenoid and infraglenoid tubercles so these muscles are first is long head of biceps that is attached to the supraglenoid tubercle and long head of triceps that is attached to infraglenoid tubercle so here you can see the glenoid cavity so uh, here the supraglenoid tubercle is just present above the glenoid cavity infraglenoid tubercle just below that here again follow the same rule biceps only two heads triceps three head so triceps has to be below the biceps now uh, muscles attached to the three fossae of the scapula so here we have the subscapular fossa this is supraspinous fossa and this is infraspinous fossa so the names of the muscles are not very difficult they follow the names of the fossae so subscapularis muscle will be attached or taking origin from the medial two-third of the subscapular fossa then supraspinatus muscle will take origin from supraspinous fossa and infraspinatus muscle will take origin from infraspinous fossa or that they are present on the dorsal surface now let us look at the muscles attached to the processes of scapula so we are going to begin with the coracoid process so there is insertion of pectoralis minor and there is origin of two muscles from the tip of the coracoid process and these are the short head of biceps and coracobrachialis remember the long head takes origin from supraglenoid tubercle so they are very close to each other so coracoid process how many muscles are attached three insertion is of pectoralis minor and origin is of short head of biceps and coracobrachialis let us look at the uh, acromion process and the spine so here we can see this is the upper border of the crest of spine and here we will call this as the medial border of the acromion process so they there we have insertion of trapezius and then to the lower border of the crest of spine and the lateral border of the acromion process we have origin of deltoid this is simple to understand remember the upper border trapezius is above and deltoid is below so that way also you can remember this okay so now uh, the very often asked question right most of the time this question will be asked name the structures attached to the coracoid process so here this is a top view actually and this is the coracoid process so how many muscles are attached three muscles and how many ligaments three ligaments muscles we have already seen so one is the insertion of pectoralis minor and second is origin of short head of biceps and coracobrachialis which you can see here let us look at the three ligaments so you just remember there is a bone which is present uh, anteriorly right very close to the scapula and there is a bone with which it articulates that is present laterally that is humerus so uh, you can remember it this way also that the ligaments will be going uh, at least one ligament will be going from the coracoid process to the clavicle another from the coracoid process to the humerus so let us look at these ligaments coracoclavicular ligament right so this you can see here this is coracoclavicular ligament and which has got two parts conoid and the trapezoid part now the second ligament would be coracohumeral ligament which will be going to the humerus and the third will be going to another part of the scapula that is coracoacromial ligament in fact the coracoid process the acromion process and this coracoacromial uh, ligament they will form coracoacromial arch so the three ligaments are coracoclavicular coracohumeral and coracoacromial another question that you can be asked is to show the suprascapular notch and what passes through it so we have already seen along the lateral part of the superior border we have a depressed area which is known as suprascapular notch now here you can see this notch is bridged by this ligament which is present here the transversely placed ligament and there are two structures which are passing here one structure is passing above the uh, ligament and another is passing uh, deep to the ligaments right so which are these structures the notch is suprascapular notch so 
the suprascapular nerve and suprascapular artery will be passing artery is above the ligament nerve is deep to the ligament so it is very simple to remember artery starts with a and above also starts with a so the suprascapular artery will be above the ligament whereas suprascapular nerve will be below the ligament sometimes you are also asked uh, about the ossification of scapula so you should know how many centers of ossification are present so there is uh, one primary center of ossification and uh, for the body and there are seven secondary centers of ossification so let us see what are these seven centers of ossification let us consider first the processes so here we have two for the acromion process two for the coracoid process one fill for the glenoid cavity the slower part here and we have one for the medial border and one for the angle so these are the total seven so two for coracoid process two for acromion process there is no the this thing of center of ossification secondary center of ossification for spine just remember coracoid process two acromion process two now you need three more right so you move from medial border inferior angle and reach the glenoid cavity that way you can remember but nothing for the lateral border so one for the medial border one for the inferior angle and one for the glenoid cavity so this is all about the scapula these are the questions you must prepare uh, before your viva voce examination another question asked about scapula is what is winging of scapula and what causes it so in this picture we can see the winging of the scapula this is often asked when you show the insertion of serratus anterior along the costal surface of medial border of scapula so at that time it is often asked so when a person what is winging of scapula when a person pushes against the wall the medial border and the inferior angle they stand out they become unduly prominent because one of the function of uh, this uh, muscle uh, that is serratus anterior is to hold the scapula against the thoracic wall so it is obvious i am repeating this name so what causes it it is paralysis of which muscle serratus anterior and why it will happen it may occur because of injury to long thoracic nerve the long thoracic nerve which supplies serratus anterior at this time the examiner will also ask you what is the root value of long thoracic nerve it is also known as bell's nerve the root value is c5 c6 and c7 and what is special about this nerve they will ask this also the long thoracic nerve actually runs superficial to serratus anterior because most of the muscles are supplied on their deeper aspect by the respective nerves but long thoracic nerve runs superficially on the serratus anterior muscle and that's why it may actually uh, get injured uh, during mastectomy when the lymph nodes are getting removed from that area so that could be one of the reason for cause uh, for the injury of the long thoracic nerve so that's all for this video thanks for watching and if you have not subscribed please subscribe my channel so that i can put more such videos and if you want uh, the questions and answers in anatomy all types of that then visit the website that is anatomyqa.com thanks once again